Hello everyone, this is Mark. Welcome to my Calc 3 videos. And today, we're going to talk about tangent planes and linear approximations. This is going to be an interesting one. So, tangent planes. Let's start with some conceptual understandings. Um, what, are the equations of, of the, what are the equations of the tangent planes for explicit and implicit functions? So, let's go to my handy dandy notes here. So, Right, I think we have discussed before, right? A surface can be defined explicitly or implicitly, right? So here are some examples of explicit and implicit surfaces that you can take a look at. So the basic di differentiation is your output variable, whether your output variable is isolated or not. So for an explicit one, for an explicit surface, um, you have the this is your tangent plane equation so you, you have your function value at a of b and then you have your your partial derivative derivative with respect to x and y at that point and you and i have x minus a and, and y minus b and then for implicit functions which is a little bit different uh you have fx fy and fz so partial derivatives and you have x minus a y minus b z plus c so these are the definitions. Uh, let's return to the slides. Um, so what do you need to define the plane, right? So I think this goes back way back to our, our previous discussions on lines and planes in 3D. What do you need to define a plane? You need a lot, a point, a point and a vector, right? Right, so this one is so in a in a plane in a in a context of a plane, the vector has to be the normal vector that's perpendicular to the plane, right? So, so what do you think these f x and f y and f f x and f y f z's are? These are the vector components making up that vector that's perpendicular to the to the to the surface at that particular location right so um does the equation of implicit function resemble the definition of planes right again why don't you take a good at good look at right so we this is your vector components again and these are your points so this is the exact same thing as the definition of planes but now instead of any planes these now make up the tangent plane of a surface All right um, so we can modify the equation for explicit function um, and uh, get the get the expression of the implicit ones so let's take a look um, so if you basically move this one to the other side and then do some basic algebra, you should be able to arrive to the same equation. So I'm just going to put it there simply. Um, it's not something that's really important, but the key is that um, we are using the basic definition of plane, right? A point and a vector. A point that's point inside the plane and a vector that's normal to the plane to define our tangent planes. And we have two ways of defining it, explicit and implicit. So, linear approximations. So the linear approximation of, of a single variable function is given as such. I'm pretty sure you have seen this in Calc 1 and Calc 2. Um, which geometric object is used to approximate the function, right? So let's say I have, a, I have a graph right here, and this is my function, like something like that, right? And then, and then this equation, let's say my point A is right here, right? And that's what this Y function will look like, right? What kind of geometric object is this pink line? Is this pink thing? <laughs> I got to give it away, right? It's, uh, it's a line. We're using a, we're using a line to approximate a function in the one dimensional world, quote unquote, or two dimensional world, or however you want to call it, right? In calc one and calc two. So let's say, if we add a dimension to a line, what does it become, right? Not, a line is one dimensional. If we add another dimension, 
right? It becomes a plane, right? It becomes a plane, right? So can we relate that to one of the, um, can we relate that to the multivariable function, right? So we can um, take a look at the linear approximation definition um, that's, that we have learned in the class, right? So the linear approximation is your function at that point, and then you have all of this, right? But take a look, right? This is the tangent plane for explicit surfaces, and this is a linear approximation, right? They look quite familiar, right? They almost look exactly the same. They look almost exactly the same, right? So if you look at them again, right, they look, the equations of the tangent plane and the linear approximation formula are very similar. And in fact, this is actually called the tangent, it can also be called tangent plane approximation, right? So by its name, we are approximating a surface with its tangent plane just using the same idea that we have learned in calc 1 and calc 2 and we are ex extending that by one dimension right we're approximating a function with a line now we're approximating a function with a plane so i hope this analogy helps you understanding uh, what we are learning graphically and uh, and it helps you gives you more confidence into what we are doing okay so the differential, right? The, diff the definition of differential I already gave you. So let's say I'm standing on a mountain where my coordinates is the z of function of x, uh, of function of x and y, right? What am I? What is my change in altitude if I move dx in the east direction and then move dy in the north direction, right? What is my change in altitude, right? I gave you the hint. It's in the equation. Right, so the answer is change in dz. Right, I hope I hope this. Uh, so this is, um, this is this is how much I'm changing in total. Right, if I'm change, this so this is how, so the, so the first term is describing. Hold on a second. It's the highlighter is not more working very well. Um, the the first term f x dx is describing how much how much height I have gained or lost if I moved in the east direction, and then the second term is how much altitude I have gained or lost if I move in the north direction. So if I add these changes in altitude together, then that is my total change in altitude. So I hope this makes sense to you. Um, so there are three different topics that we will, um, three different three different types of questions that can be asked you just from this um, single lecture alone. So let's go ahead and dig into them. So as usual, let's go ahead and pull up these sheets and we'll stack them up together. Um, so here's your first one. Which of the following equation for playing tangent to the surface is you know at the point of two two two, okay. So first of all, I think everybody can agree with me that this is a tangent plane problem, right? Well, and you can we can figure that out by reading the word plane and tangent. So it's probably asking for a tangent plane problem, but we're not done yet. What type of tangent plane problem is it? Right, there are two types because there are two equations for tangent planes. One is explicit t surfaces and implicit surfaces, right? So if we e examine the equation of the surface, this is explicit surface, right? So this is a tangent plane for explicit surface, right? So the key words are tangent plane and an explicitly defined function. So to solve it, the first thing is we're going to identify the points. We're going to identify the points as well, and then we're going to evaluate the point at A, B. So at A, B, 
equals to 2, 2, and then f at a, b, which is pretty, which is nice enough given in the question, equals to 2. Easy enough. Second step, we're going to find the partial derivatives. So f, x equals to um, 1 over 3. Um, so let's go ahead and write down the original equation as well. Um, f equals to x squared plus y squared, 1 over 3. So power rule, x squared plus y squared, and then minus 2 over 3, and then chain rule, 2x. And then I think everybody can agree with me that fy is practically, practically the same as fx, but just replacing the y and then the chain rule part. So, not bad. And then we're going to evaluate these func values, fx at 2, 2 equals to 1 over 3, 4 plus 4, right? And then minus 2 over 3, and then 2 times 2 equals to 4, equals to... 4 over 3 times 1 over 4 equals to 1 over 3, right? And I think you can agree with me that Fy is at 2, 2 just equals to the same thing. So, step 3, the final step, is we're going to um, use the plane equation, tangent plane equation, so... Copy and paste. All right? So z equals to, right? We have the f at ab equals to 2 right here. That's why step 1 is important. 2 plus 1 over 3 x minus 2 plus 1 over 3 y minus 2. Right, so then we're gonna expand that to it's equals to two plus one over three x minus two over three plus one over three y minus two over three. Okay, easy enough. And then we're going to uh, combine these constant parts. Z equals to two over three plus one over three x plus one over three y. And then multiply both sides by 3, we got 3z equals to 2 plus x plus y. So, let's take a look at our options. And that seems to be A. And that is the correct answer. So, this is how you can solve a tangent plane problem. Right? So, you can... So, basically, we just need to find what we, whatever we need to... What, what all the parts that we need in the in the equation right and then we can we once we connected all of the pieces we put them together and we have our solution not too bad okay second set let, let's take a look at second type of problem okay find the tangent plane level to the surface uh, find the tangent plane to the level surface um whatever this is right at the three two one so, well, we know that it's a tangent plane, right? And we also have a plane equation. Well, what's so different about it compared to the last one? Well, the only thing that is different is that this is an implicit function because the input and output variables are all mixed up together, right? So, this is a different type of problem just because of that simple difference. So that's why I've been focusing on these keywords and the problem types. So you need to be able to f identify these problems using the keywords, and then you can address them with appropriate solving processes. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with the second one. Okay, so first one, first step. First step is find the point a b c right so we're going to have the point which is you know three two one easy enough 
right? So remember, why do we need to define a point, a point and a vector? So here's your point. Uh, and then we're going to find the fx, fy, and fz. So to evaluate them, sorry, uh, find the function of fx, fy, fz. So we have the function, right, x, y square z cubic minus 12 equals 0. So f x equals to y squared z cubic f y equals to 2 x y z cubic f z equals to 3 x y squared z squared, right? And then we can get, and this is what we will get from step two. And step three is we're going to evaluate them at the point that we just found. So f x at 3, 2, 1 equals, right? Let me, let me make my life a little bit easier so by duplicating, right? We're going to evaluate these three components, y and z. So, so y is 2, so 2 square 1 cubic equals to 4, and then 2, 3, 2, 1 equals to 12, and then 3 times 3 times 2 square times 1 square equals to 36. So that's step 3. Step 4, right, is our plane, uh, tangent plane equation for implicit surfaces. So that's how I call it, is I call them, <laughs> plug the point into the vector. Um, so, um, step four. There you go. Uh, so, fx is four. So, let me expand that a little bit. fx equals to four times x minus three plus 12, y minus 12, uh, y minus two, and then plus 36 times z equal minus 1 equals 0. So first of all, we can divide everything by 4. So x minus 3 plus 3y minus 2 plus 9z minus 1 equals 0. So what we end up with is x plus 3y plus 9z equals to 3 plus 6 plus 9 equals to 18. So there you have the answer. So what we got? So it's, I think that is answer choice E. So, right? So these tangent plane servers are not difficult. The tricky part is you need to know what type of problems you are looking at and then apply the same, the, the correct solving process as well as the right equation, right? So, and so um, that's how you can solve tangent plane problems. Let's take a look at one more type, right? I told you there are three types of questions this problem can ask you. So using linear approximation of x, x, y as such at point four, three, the approximation, the approximate value of this value is, right? Well, the first key giveaway is, well, I think I already understand that it's linear approximation, right? Linear approximation. So not only that, we can also give an idea of this is a linear approximation problem. It's because of these quote unquote ugly values, right? It's a small deviation from a point, right? It's a small deviation from a point. So these are the two um, keys that tells you this is an linear approximation problems, right? Again, we're approximating in the 3D world to approximate a surface, we are approximating it with a tangent plane, right? It's called tan it's also called tangent plane approximation. So Solving steps, step one, 
we are going to evaluate a and b so identify a and b and we're going to evaluate the function at a b so we're going to get you know f a b right so what is a b here so a b i think you all agree with me is 4 3 right and then f at 4 3 equals to 4 square plus 3 times 3 equals to 5. Okay, that's your first step. And the second step, we're going to find fx and fy, and we're going to evaluate them at a, b. So our function is um, Uh, we're going to write it into a power form. So x squared plus 3y one half. So it's easier to, to perform the power rule. Um, fx equals to one half x q, q uh, squared plus 3y minus one half 2x power rule. fy equals to, um, we're just going to copy the whole thing here, except the power rule part, uh, chain rule part. Uh, three. So there you go. Fx at four three equals two one half uh, four square plus three times three minus one half plus four times two. This will probably round equals to one fifth. The whole thing, the whole including the power equals to a over ten. Everything else, everything else becomes a. And you have 2 and 5, so that's 8 over 10. And Fy, similar thing, we're going to get 3 over 10. Okay. Finally, we're going to apply the tangent plane, tangent plane equation. So, um, so um, there, you, there it is, first of all. And then we're... The x and y is the point we are approximating to, so that's the value that we want. Um, the or I call them the ugly number, right? They're not the whole, they're not integers. They are some sort of small deviation from an integer. And a b is the point we are approximating from, so that's the nice numbers, the integers. So to then you approximate the function. Are going to have L of 4.02, 3.97, or 2.97. Right, so that's giving in the problem. That's the point that we're going to approximate with. Um, equals to uh, 5, that's the value at AB, plus are first of all 8 over 10 right and then we have the ugly number minus the nice number so 4.02 minus 4 and we have 3 over 10 again ugly number minus a nice number 2.97 minus 3 so we're going to end up with 5 plus 8 over 10 times 2 over 100 minus 3 over 10 times 3 over 100. So this will end up being 5 plus 1,000. 16 minus 9, this will give us 5.007. So that is the correct answer to the problem. There you go. So many approximation is it's a little bit tricky. Um, there are a lot of moving things going on, right? You know, you want to the key, the kind of the confusing part for me is I sometimes have a hard time identifying what is the point that I'm approximating from and what's the point I'm approximating to, right? And, th and then where do those numbers fit inside this equation? So, I, but, the, but the overall step is not too difficult, right? I mean, it's just plugging the equation in, but you need to know where things are and how to, how to apply them, right? So I hope these solving steps give you a 
clear instruction on how to follow them and how to arrive these right to the answer quickly. And then again, you can apply the solving steps to every single type of questions of the same of the same type. So that's it for um, that's it for all for that's all I have for this chapter. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next video.